Hi, this is Peter with CalcBook, and today we're going to be looking at Web Panel Zone Shear. So, Web Panel Zone Shear is uh, part of the AISC spec, uh, section J10.6. And really, what it is, it's, it applies you know, typically to moment connections where you are looking at the web of the column. Uh, as part of that moment connection. So the official definition right, is, is applies to double concentrated forces applied to one or both flanges of a member at the same time. So uh, really looking at when you are developing uh, uh, forces through the column web and checking um, that panel zone shear. So typically used, like I said, to check the column web as part of a moment connection. And if the web does not have enough capacity to transfer the loading, um, you typically would apply a doubler plate. So um, you can see in that lower image there, there's both a doubler plate and a transverse stiffener plate. So you might have the transverse stiffener uh, for column web buckling or something like that. And then the doubler plate uh, if you need additional capacity for the panel zone shear. So let's go ahead and look at our problem statement. We are going to assume we have a W14 by 159 column and two W24 by 103 beams, which create a moment connection as shown there in the image to the right. Uh, we are going to run the calculations for panel zone shear and see if we need a doubler plate or not. So before we do that, though, we want to run a few numbers um, before we get into calc book so we have uh, the correct parameters we need to input. First, we need to know the depth of the, de of the beam. So we have a depth of 24 and a half inches, uh, flange thickness of 0.98 inches. And then for the W14, depth of 15 inches, uh, flange thickness of 1.19, web thickness of 0.745, and a flange width of 15.6 inches. And then we want to calculate what our uh, forces are going to be due to the moments on those beams. So we take our moment, which is 882 kip foot, and then we divide that by the depth of the beam to the center of the flanges. So we do the 24 and a half inches minus 0 0.98. That gets the center to center of the flanges. And then we take our moment and divide it by that distance. That gets us 450 kips. So those red arrows there, tension and compression. And we want to calculate what our actual shear is going to be in the column web. So we take those two components, right? So we have 450 plus 450, and then we subtract off uh, the shear force in the column from above. So 450 plus 450 minus 90 gets us 810 kips in shear in the column web. And the last thing we want to calculate is what our axial force is in the column. So we've got uh, 1,200 kips above and 1,335 below. Um, so we're just going to average that out to 1270 kips. So that is our problem statement. Let's go ahead and open up CalcBook and get started on the design. All right, we've got CalcBook open now. So let's go ahead and open up our uh, AISC 16th edition module. We could use either the 15th or the 16th, but we'll go ahead and use 16th edition. Go into our connection design, and then we're gonna go click on panel zone shear. You remember previously we actually did the the flanges with concentrated forces, right? The moment design, uh, moment connection design for some of the other checks on the column, and now we're gonna do the panel zone shear check. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, start with our inputs here. Uh, we didn't state it in the problem in the problem statement, but we are going to assume that the inelastic panel zone deformation is not accounted for in the analysis. Um, our depth of column is going to be 15 inches. Our width of the column flange is going to be 15.6 inches. Our thickness of the column, column flange is 1.19. And the thickness of the column web is going to be 0 0.745 inches. And we're going to be using 50 KSI steel. Uh, for the demand, uh, we have our ultimate loads already, so we don't need to use any load combinations. We're getting these forces out of our analysis model. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and enter in our axial load on the column, which we decided was going to be 1270. And our shear in the column web is 810 kips. All right, so we can already see here, right, we're pretty far over. So we are going to need doubler plates, but let's go ahead and look into the calculation and, uh, and, and run through those steps. So uh, the demand, right, not a lot to see here, just summarizing what we already uh, put into the demand input. And then we open up the J10.6, right, we've got our column information. So our area of the web, or sorry, area of the, of the sectional, uh, cross-sectional, a uh, cross-section of the column. And then we're going to go ahead and calculate our axial strength, just AG times FY. We are uh, using LRFD, so our alpha factor is going to be 1.0. 
So we're going to compare the alpha times PR, which is just 1 times our 1270. And then we're going to compare that with 0.4 times our yield uh, strength of the column. So we determined that our alpha PR is greater than that 0.4 PY. Um, and so we are going to use the spec section J10-10. So we go to that calculation and we're going to run the calculation 0.6 FY depth of column times the thickness of the web times 1.4 minus that, uh, that ratio uh, alpha PR over PY. And that gets us a, a nominal capacity of 286 kips. Uh, and with our reduction, that's 257 kips. So that is significantly less than our demand of 810 kips. So for this particular calculation, we would have to design doubler plates. Uh, that's not going to be part of this video, but we will do that in a future video. Thanks for watching today's video. We'd like to go ahead and offer you guys a 25% discount on your first month subscription of CalcBook. You can go ahead and use the discount code YTCB2024. Thanks again for watching. We hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time.